Uh, good morning, Meeting House Church. How's everyone doing this morning? My name is Bobby Dawson. I'm the youth pastor. I just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. This morning is our prayer and worship service. So if you came in this morning, I hope you received one of these index cards. All I ask is that you fill it out with a prayer request that you have. We're offering plates going to be passed around, and I just want you to stick it in it. You don't have to put your name on it if you don't want to, but just put something on it that you need prayer for. And at the end of the service, we're going to redistribute these, and somebody is going to be praying for you over your prayer request. I just got two quick announcements, and then we're going to continue with our service. The first is this. If you're in guest services or you just are thinking about being a part of it, immediately after the service, down in MHC Central, which is right beneath this room right here, there's going to be a guest services meeting. So that's immediately after the service. And then the next is this. This Saturday at 9 a.m., we are having a work day here at church. If you are willing and able, we could definitely use your help. There's a sign-up sheet in the back uh, table over there. I just ask that you put your name on it so I know who's coming, and lunch will be provided. All right, thank you guys very much. Hey, church, good to see you this morning. And um, I'm excited to be here for Prayer and Worship Sunday. First Sunday of the month is always kind of cool because um, we get to spend a little more time singing, and I like that. So in my opinion, I, I, I'm excited for this morning. I want to start us off on a different note than we usually start our service off on, and I want to ask you guys, um, and really ask myself because I need it too, um, whatever kind of frustrations that you've had this morning or maybe even this past weekend, I'm going to ask you guys to just put that on pause. Uh, we're going to start with God's word this morning, and so Whatever is floating around in your head, whatever's floating around in my head, whatever we think we're here to do, whatever our ideas about God that we've been taught in Sunday school or mass or whatever, I want us to hit the pause button on that, and I want us to just meditate on what God's word actually says. And I want us to just focus uh, and think and just be thankful for what God's word says and realign our thoughts um, and our beliefs and our, and our thinking to, to his word. So I want to read what... Psalm chapter 25 says, uh, King David wrote this song, and, and the heading of the psalm is called Dependence on the Lord. And I think sometimes, well, I know sometimes I don't depend on God, and I kind of come to church and pat myself on the back for getting up early and, and getting here and doing my hour a week for God. You know, look at me, God, I did the thing that I was supposed to do for you, but really, um, we're here uh, to honor and glorify and lift up the creator, the king of the universe, um, who formed life, who gives us breath, who allows us to live and move and have our being. So uh, let's hear uh, and let's listen and meditate on what Psalm 25 says. Lord, I turn to you. My God, I trust in you. Do not let me be disgraced. Do not let my enemies gloat over me. No one who waits for you will be disgraced. Those who act treacherously without cause will be disgraced. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. I wait for you all day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and your faithful love, for they have existed from antiquity. Do not remember the sins of my youth or, the acts, or my acts of rebellion in keeping with your faithful love. Remember me. Because of your, remember me because of your goodness, Lord. The Lord is good and upright. Therefore, he shows sinners the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the Lord's ways show faithful love and truth to those who keep his covenant and decrees. Because of your name, Yahweh, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? He will show him the way he should choose. He will have a good life. And his descendants will inherit the land. The secret counsel of the Lord is for those who fear him. And he reveals his covenant to them. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he will pull my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and afflicted. The distresses of my heart increase. Bring me out of my sufferings. Consider my affliction and trouble and take away all my sins. Consider my enemies. They are numerous and they hate me violently. Guard me and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and what is right watch over me, for I wait for you. 
So let's shift our hearts this morning to a position of dependence and reliance and trust on God because we're here because of him. Uh, we didn't breathe a breath this morning. We didn't open our eyelids this morning uh, except for God's grace and love and mercy and kindness and power. So let's realign ourselves with that this morning. We're going to sing. We're going to sing some songs and worship. I want to invite you guys, if you want to stand up and sing, you can. But if you want to sit, I want this time to be a time for you to interact with God however you want to. I grew up in church, so we stood all the time. And uh, I was always taught you stand up for singing because it, uh, you can focus without distractions. But there's nothing in the Bible that says standing up during singing is a thing or anything. So I want us to, in fact, worship means to bow down and to humble ourselves and to serve and to submit. So whatever helps you this morning, standing, sitting, kneeling, praying with each other, uh, coming up to the front, dancing, whatever it is. I want you guys this morning to interact with God the way he puts on your heart. And we're going to sing and just focus for the first few minutes of the service on who God is and our dependence on him. Lord God, this morning we just come to you and we admit that we need you uh, more than anything, Lord. Uh, you're the source of life. You're the source of our breath. You're the source of everything that we can see and touch. Every good and perfect thing comes from you. It's a gift. Uh, Lord, the fact that we can gather this morning is a gift. Uh, the fact that we can drive to church um, in hopefully a heated car is, is a gift, Lord. Uh, just help these things to not be taken for granted. Help us to humble ourselves and rely on you this morning, Lord, uh, just to focus on you today. i 
Psalm 45, Psalm 145, excuse me, begins by saying this, I exalt you, my God, the King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. I will honor your name forever and ever. Yahweh is great and is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation will declare your works to the next and proclaim your mighty acts. And uh, I will speak of your splendor and glorious majesty and your wonderful works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts, and I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and will sing and will joyfully sing of your righteousness. Go! 
take your rightful place uh, in this service, Lord. Glorify yourself. Uh, Lord, you are higher, you are stronger than anything we could imagine. Uh, Lord, just help us to humble ourselves, to honor you, to put you in your rightful place. Uh, we're here for you, Lord, and we love you. Uh, thank you for just loving us and for all the things that you've done for us. Thank you for the gospel, for Jesus Christ, Lord, and, uh, and giving us life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you here. If this is your first time, my name is James Thomason. Uh, I am the lead pastor here at Meeting House, and uh, I'd love to get a chance to say hello to you after the service. Um, I'll be right back there under the words Connection Center. Uh, if you have a minute, I'd love for you to stop by and say hello. Well, uh, it's Prayer and Worship Sunday, my favorite Sunday of the month. Man, I, I love Prayer and Worship Sunday. Um, it's a time when we do things differently. Uh, we're, we, we put the, the, the onus on ourselves to, to meet with God. You know, I don't know if that sounds right, the onus. Uh, that that kind of sounds a little bit heavy. It's an opportunity that we want to provide uh, for us, each one of us individually, as families, whoever, uh, to, to, to interact directly with God as his children. So we're going to spend a lot of time in prayer um, and uh, just about what you want uh, to pray about. Did everybody get a prayer card? Um, did everybody get a communion uh, cup? Everybody have one of these? If you don't have one, raise your hand right now because we're going to get started here and we'll get you one. Okay. We need one right up here and one right up here. Kale, our, our worship leader, forgot to get one. You know, the, uh, in, uh, in, in John chapter 16, Jesus said, uh, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will witness. And that's what we ask for uh, every Sunday, but particularly on prayer and worship Sunday. We want God to do ministry on us and in us. God's Word says that the, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches God's mind. He knows God's mind. And He searches our hearts and minds. And so that's what we pray for this morning, the work, the searching work of the Holy Spirit in every one of us uh, to bring us closer to Him. So we interact uh, directly with Him and and today uh, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 2 uh, to bring us to the, to the Lord's Supper or communion, whichever one you are used to calling it. We're going to start in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. And uh, we're going to read just, just a few verses and uh, just look at what they say and think about Jesus, right? Because it's all about Jesus, it is. Jesus is our great high priest we're going to learn today. Jesus is the pioneer of our salvation. Jesus is 
the only name by which we must be saved. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the only one uh, who is born and can bear our sin away so that we can be in relationship with God. Jesus is, is God's gift to us. And so let's read about him and what he did for us in Hebrews chapter 2, starting in verse 10. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make who? The pioneer. The pioneer of our salvation, perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. I just want to notice a couple of things. First of all, as I said, Jesus is the pioneer of your salvation. There is and never has been and never will be another human being who could walk into God's presence on their own merits, on their own righteousness, on their own holiness, except for Jesus Christ. He blazed the trail. He was the first one of us human beings to be able to stand in God's presence on his own because he was without sin. And of course, he wasn't just a human being, but this emphasizes his humanity. He was the son of God who became one of us to blaze a trail back to God for us so that he could represent us to God and gain us entrance into God's presence. The pioneer of their salvation, perfect through what he suffered. And here's not perfect about, uh, this isn't the idea of perfection as as, uh, as the absence of sin or error, but completeness. He was made complete. You know, Jesus became so much a human being as we are that he had to grow to maturity as a human being. All the things that we go through and more, all the hardships, all the struggles that God allows in order to bring us to maturity, not only as human beings, but as especially as his sons and daughters, God took Jesus through. So Jesus is well acquainted with our, with our struggle, with our pain, with our sorrow, even with our temptation, but completely unacquainted with our sin. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. We must be made holy by Jesus Christ in order to have a relationship with God. God is holy. And so it's not good enough to be a good person. It's not even good. You know that Jesus, you know, we say a lot of times, hey, he's a great guy. You know, he's a good person. She's a good person. You know what Jesus said to that? There is no one good but God. So our sin, by nature, by who we are naturally, stands between us and God. And we must be made holy in order to have a, rela a relationship with God. And Jesus Christ is the only one who can make us holy. It's why he came, to make us holy. Verse 14, next slide. Since the children, that's us, have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. I already pointed out that Jesus shared in our humanity. And by his death, he overcame the power of death. So I want you to know 
Christ follower. That the day that you die will be the best day of your life. It will be the best day you have ever had. Anyone you love who's a believer who has died, the best day they had, ever had, to that point was the day that you were probably in your greatest sorrow. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul said it's far better to depart and be with Christ. Right? We have nothing to fear. Death, death should, not, should not scare us. It should kind of excite us, actually. I try not to speak of anybody. I've kind of made a, a practice of this and try not to speak of anybody in the past tense anymore. Because the truth is we all live forever somewhere. We either live with God for eternity in joy, in adventure, in happiness, in celebration, in discovery, because, because we've put our faith in Jesus Christ and he has made us holy, he's forgiven us, and we're in relationship with God, or we live forever eternally separated from him in torment, Jesus said, because our sin has not been removed. Because it still stands and will forever stand between us and God. Verse 17. For this reason, he had to be made like us, like them, fully human in every way. In order that he might become a merciful and faithful, what? High priest. Jesus is a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God. That he might make atonement. For the sins of the people. The high priest's job in ancient Israel was to go once a year on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, into the Holy of Holies, which represented God's direct presence. Uh, that's where uh, God, if you will, condensed his, his presence in, 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 into a a tangible form. And once a year, only the high priest could go in on the Day of Atonement. And he had to go in with blood. And they actually, it's so dangerous to go into God's presence with sin uh, on you and between you and God that they would tie a rope to the high priest's ankles and they would put bells on his, on his, uh, on his shawl so that if he died, they, nobody, would go, nobody wanted to go in there because only he was allowed and they could drag him out. If he died because he, he went in un, unclean, unholy into God's presence. But once a year, he would go in and he would, he would put blood on the mercy seat, on the seat of atonement, which was the, the, the lid on the, on the ark of the covenant. The ark was, a, I'm, going, getting, I'm sorry to... to to, to get derailed here, but I don't know if, if I say the ark, I don't know what you think. The ark was a, a box uh, that, that God had the people of Israel make, and, and in it he put the Ten Commandments that, that God inscribed on, on, on stone uh, with Moses on top of Mount Sinai, and also a pot of manna, which was food that God provided, miraculous food that God provided for, him, uh, for them in the desert as they, as they journeyed through the, through the wilderness, um, and, and Aaron's rod, uh, which was a staff that had been cut, and God miraculously made it bud. And in that, in that, and then on top of that was was called the mercy seat, the atonement seat. And the high priest would sprinkle blood on that, right? The blood of a sacrificed animal, a goat. Um, and 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 on another goat called the scapegoat, he would confess the sins of Israel, of the people, his own sins and the sins of Israel. And, and that goat would be led out into the wilderness. And so their sins would be separated from them. Their sins would transfer, you know, uh, spiritually, me uh, metaphorically from them onto that goat. And it would be led out into the wilderness and let go. So they would be separated from their sins. And their sins would be atoned for by the sacrifice of the other goat. And so there's a great... Uh, a great line in the book of Hebrews. As a matter of fact, let me just read it. 
And it lets us in on a conversation between Jesus and the Father. Before Jesus came to earth, ready to, ready to come down here as our high priest, he says to God, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. The blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. They were, they were simply a, 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 a measure, an intermediate measure for the time being. But then Jesus says to the Father, but a body you prepared for me. And so Jesus, our great high priest, instead of sacrificing a goat for, the sin, for our sins, God prepared him a body and he became the sacrifice that atoned for our sins. And it's his blood that makes atonement for our sins. And I just want to say a couple of words about this word atonement. Only Jesus can atone for our sins. And it's a word that's it's a scary word because it implies some things. Atonement means to propitiate. Now, there's a word we never use. You'll only read that word in theology books. Atonement means to propitiate, to appease or satisfy God's just verdict against our sin. You know, the Bible says that we, God's wrath, His just judgment against our sins toward us because of our sins abides on us until the day that we turn to Jesus Christ and he propitiates, he is satisfies, he appeases God's wrath. In, in other words, justice is done. And this is what Jesus did for us. He took the justice of God so that we could receive the mercy of God. He took the wrath of God so we could receive the grace of God. He took on our sin so that we could receive His holiness. And that's where you sit and stand as a believer in Jesus Christ. You've been washed. You've been sanctified. You have been justified. By the blood of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has died once and for all for your sin. So I want to invite us now into a time of, of, uh, of asking the Holy Spirit to search us. And then a time of confession. And then we'll take the Lord's Supper, okay? So what I want to ask you to do is very simple. And maybe you've never done this before, but, but God will do it, okay? So whoever you came with, it's okay if you group up. You can pray with somebody. If you want to pray alone, that's fine. If you see somebody sitting alone and you want to join them, go join them, okay? But what I, want to do, I want to ask you to do something very simple. Just, be, just, just take a deep breath, quiet your mind. And say, Holy Spirit, I ask you just to, just to bring to my mind anything I need to confess and repent right now. And just wait. Just wait. And he'll, he'll surface some things in your mind, in your heart. Any, anybody I need to forgive. Anyone I need to go seek forgiveness. And you do what you need to do. You confess what you need to confess. And you make plans and you follow through on any reconciliation you need to make. Okay, and when that time's over, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper, right? Because God's Word tells us, it, it tells us to examine ourselves before we, we receive the Lord's Supper, all right? I'll get us started, and then I'm going to leave it to, to you and to God. Father God, thank you so much for your son Jesus, the pioneer. God, he blazed a trail to you that we could not. He charted a course to you that we could not. He bore our sin for us, which we could not. He made us holy, which we are unable to do. 
Lord, thank you. We praise you. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to search our minds and our hearts right now, to bring to us to mind anything that we need to confess, anything we need to repent, anyone we need to forgive, anyone we need to give forgiveness to. Father God, I thank you so much for your promise. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We praise you that you have provided Jesus. our advocate with you. One who speaks to you in our defense as the propitiation for our sins. Lord, thank you. Lord Jesus, I praise you for your words that if our brother or sister sins against us and they come and they repent, we must forgive them. 
if they sin against us seven times in a day and seven times return and say, I repent, we must forgive them. Lord, we thank you that you said, when Peter asked, how many times must I forgive my brother? Seven times? You said, no, 70 times, seven times. God, I praise you, O Lord. We praise you. For if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness, complete repentance, I mean, complete redemption. Therefore, we fear you. We serve you with reverence, Lord. Thank you. I thank you and praise you that we we stand before you justified, sanctified, washed clean. Your children made holy and righteous. Thank you. I thank you that our relationship with you can never be broken because it doesn't depend on us. It depends on you. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us this morning as we we celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper and as as we continue to worship and praise you. We ask for your ministry on us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So on the night before Jesus was betrayed at at what we call the Last Supper, uh, they were eating the Passover meal and and, uh, Jesus took bread and he said, uh, this is my body broken for you. Take it and eat. So the bread we eat represents Jesus' body nailed to the cross. Uh, beaten, whipped, a crown of thorns on his head, a a spear in his side as as payment for our sins. And after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup uh, this is a cup of my blood, the, the blood of the New Testament, the new covenant, the new relationship that God was offering to us through his son, Jesus Christ. A covenant of grace, a relationship of, of, of forgiveness. Really a relationship where God does all the work and we simply respond Lord Jesus, we thank you for allowing your body to be broken, your blood to be poured out, yourself to be separated from God because of our sin so that we could be united now and forever in relationship with you. Amen. kind of want to keep things going here a little bit and we're going to be it's still in hebrews and we're going to be in chapter 4 verse 14 to 16 it says this therefore since we have such a great high priest who has ascended into heaven jesus the son of god let us hold firmly to the faith we profess for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin let us then approach God's throne with gra- of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Another version says, let us approach God's throne of grace with all boldness. We're able to do that because Jesus Christ came and died on a cross for your and my sin. We're able to do that because he was raised from the dead and he ascended into heaven and that's where he is right now. And we need to be thankful for that. Because without that, we would still be doing the same old thing of sacrificing animals and having to go through this long process. But Jesus wiped all that all away. He says, you just need to come to me. So right now, we're going to give you a couple of minutes. I just want you to pray a prayer of thankfulness. 
get together with, with who you're with and just thank God for sending his son to die on a cross. Thank God that you're able to, to come here this morning, that you were able to wake up in the bed with, uh, with a blanket and be warm with food in your belly. Thank God for everything that you might think is mundane that we, we just take for granted every day. Because that's the thing that God has given us. And then I want you to thank God that we have a high priest that we can go to in our time of need and that he's there for us. So I'll just give you a couple minutes to do that.
Heavenly Father, God, thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for our sin. God, thank you for raising him from the dead and, and for always being there for us. God, your word says that you'll never leave us or forsake us, and you've stuck to that. God, thank you for being a God who, who fulfills his promises. Thank you for being a God who cares about us. Thank you for being a God who loves us even when, when we don't deserve it. God, you are the King of kings and Lords of lords. You are the creator of everything, and everything that we have is yours, and, and we do it to glorify you. God, to just thank you for who you are and for the things that you've done. God, we're here to praise your name. We, we should live every day to praise you and glorify you. Because no one deserves it but you. In your son's holy name, amen.
God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, we give you glory this morning. Honor and glorify yourself in our lives and our hearts, God. We are here for you, as we've been saying this whole hour, God. Lord, we love you. Just open our hearts to the truth um, that you have for us, Lord, in your word. Um, the truth that you came to save us. The truth that you rule and reign. That you're the righteous judge, but Jesus came to save us from our sins, Lord. Uh, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus is awesome. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10 says this. Therefore, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by a new and living way open to us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our bodies washed with pure water and our consciences cleansed. Man, that's an awesome promise. So we're going we're gonna to go to one more time of prayer, and I want you to ask well, I want you to just tell God, we just sang about it, just take a few minutes and tell God how awesome he is, okay? And, and, and uh, pray out loud, do, do whatever you want to do. You know, with the early church lifted their voices together. They lifted their voices. There was no silent praying, no silent praying aloud, okay? Lift your voice, praise God, and then you should have received one of these prayer cards. Tell God how great he is. Ask him to pour out his spirit on us. Folks, we need God's spirit. We need him to pour his spirit out on us. We're getting close, man. We're getting, we're getting closer. But I want you to realize something. There was a time on planet Earth when Book of Acts Christianity was the norm. As a matter of fact, it was the only Christianity. Okay? Let's ask God, tell him how great he is, ask him to pour out his Holy Spirit on us, on you, and then pray for the prayer card uh, that you received, and, and, we'll, and we'll end our service in, in praise one more time, okay?
Oh God, you are our God, the King, and we praise you. To you belong all wisdom and strength and wealth and honor and majesty and glory and might and power. You are the Lord and there is no other. Before you, no God was formed and neither will there be one after you. You are God eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Your love no one can fathom. No human can comprehend, but you enable us to grasp it through, the, through your Holy Spirit. We praise you. Thank you. We praise you for your Son. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for your love for the Father, for bearing our sins, for conquering our sins and death and rising again and giving us new life. We praise you, Holy Spirit, for giving us new birth, living in us and, and changing us. We praise you that we have nothing to fear. We don't have to fear poverty. We don't have to fear sickness. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear anything. We praise you that we have a home eternal with you in the heavens and in the new heavens and the new earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, we're going to lift our voices in, in praise, thanksgiving. Keep praying if you'd like, but we're going to sing one more time. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover, but the miracle did I just kick it over. My name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection.
Good news to me, church. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.